welcome to the channel. My last video on photogrammetry uh, had a pretty good response, so I thought I'd do a follow-up going over some tips and tricks to uh, make your scanning experience a little easier. If you haven't seen that last video, I'll put a card somewhere up here or a link in the description so you can go check it out. So keep watching and I'll go over some information I think you'll find useful. Let's start with how to scan an asset to give you a complete 360 degree mesh. So in my last video I mentioned that adding unique markings to the base would uh, make camera alignment easier by giving it uh, anchor points. Well in this case we want to do the exact opposite. And an easy way to do that is to wrap the base in white paper. It'll make it difficult for the cameras to lock onto it just like the white background. I added the same markings at the bottom every 10 degrees to give me reference of how far to turn. And now we can just uh, place the object on top and start shooting. In this case, I'll just be using a rock for an example. First, I'll shoot three rotations, uh, one at a very high angle, second at about a 45, and then third, a little above straight on. Then we'll just take the rock, flip it upside down, and shoot the exact same sequence um, from the other side. When you're done, you'll end up with 216 images. I think I shot a few extra, but that's fine. And here's the results in reality capture. I just brought all the cameras in. I didn't have to add any control points. All cameras aligned properly. And you can see how the two sets automatically uh, configured for being on the right side of the rock. Also, you can see there's a few spots for the white base that showed up, but for the most point, the cameras didn't recognize it. And here's the result of uh, constructing the mesh. You can see it uh, completely disregarded the base and you end up with a full 360 degree object. So I did the same thing with a little bit more complex shape, but the same idea, just shot it once uh, right side up and once upside down. And I'm using the same baby powder trick since the uh, surface is smooth and uh, has no detail in it. And here's the result in reality capture. Again, no control points, just brought all the cameras in and they all aligned. And you can see the drastic angle from the two sets of cameras because of how um, it was sitting upside down, not flat. And here's after the mesh is constructed, you can see the base didn't show up again and it's a fully 3D object. And also how smooth the surface finish is from using the baby powder to give the software something to lock onto. If you're liking this content and finding it useful, it would do me a huge favor if you could hit that like button. It really helps YouTube uh, share this to more people and helps the channel grow. Now let's take a look at how you would go about scanning a car. In the last video, there was uh, a few comments on how to scan cars. So I thought I'd show an example here. And uh, here, you take an old sock and just put some baby powder in it. And you basically create a rosin bag. And now you can use that to just um, powder the car wherever the place you want to scan. Uh, you can do the whole car this way if you want. I would probably do it in sections, but uh, you just work your way around covering all the places that you uh, plan on scanning. And uh, the beauty is once you're done, it'll, you just wash it off or you take a leaf blower and blow it all off. Here I'm just taking a test shot to uh, dial in my camera settings. When shooting handheld to avoid motion blur from camera shake, you want your shutter speed to at least be equal to or greater than your focal length of your lens. So for example, if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, you would want your shutter speed to be at least 1 50th of a second or higher. And I was shooting at a focal length of 17 millimeter and at a shutter speed of 1 500th of a second. So I was well above any chance of getting motion blur. This means I don't need to be very careful when shooting the pictures. I can just scan back and forth over the car taking pictures, knowing that uh, all the pictures will be sharp. Uh, occasionally, every once in a while, you stop and take a look to make sure it's working properly. But for the most part, uh, I've done this long enough that you can basically shoot blind. Now, when you get to detailed sections, you can see here I'm taking a bunch of pictures of the front panel, uh, and then I'm doing the same thing of the tire. But generally, you would shoot 
the uh, entire car from a little farther back. And then if there's certain aspects of the car that you want to make sure you get high detail on, you can go back and take another subset up, up close. And here's the camera alignment in reality capture. You can see the uh, overall camera cluster farther out and then the two sections that were uh, done close up on the wheel and the front section. Also, you can see all the parts that were powdered have a very dense point cloud where the rest of the car, uh, there's very little where it was just plain metal. And then here's the uh, mesh construction. You can see the top of the light where I didn't get enough powder on it, how it, um, the construction has a lot more noise, whereas the front of the light's a lot smoother. The same with the bottom of the A-pillar. You can see I didn't really put any powder there and it's much noisier uh, compared to the fender that's pretty smooth. Then if we look at the uh, front grille, you can see how uh, smooth and detailed it is due to the uh, large amount of pictures focused on it. And then the same thing with the wheel. Um, I mean, everything came out extremely detailed. Even the uh, lug nuts and inside the hubcaps, um, a lot of that showed up and there was no powder, nothing applied to this. It was just the volume of pictures from multiple different angles. Uh, also, the tire and hubcaps uh, are not glossy, which makes it also a lot easier for the cameras to uh, uh, align properly and construct. So people were mentioning that they wanted to 3D print their car after scanning it. Um, and it's possible there'd just be a lot of cleanup work still for sections like inside the wheel wells and parts where you can't really photograph well and you're getting a lot of uh, messy geometry. You'll need to go and clean all that up before you can get a proper print. But if you were using this to say you wanted to uh, use this as reference to design uh, other parts to go into your car, this would be perfectly fine as long as you have a clean print to use that as your reference to model on top of. Finally, let's look at how to properly set the real world scale of your scan and then export the mesh. In the last video, I didn't go over um, how to properly scale your objects and export correctly. I did that afterwards in the uh, 3D software, but you can do that all right here in um, Reality Capture. Under the 3D Scene Tools tab, you would select Define Distances, and then that lets you pick two points on your mesh. Uh, that'll generate control points automatically and the distance between them that it thinks it is. Um, so once you do that, you go through just like before with control points and you verify that the cameras it's assigning to are correct. And then you just need to define what the true distance is. In this example, it's uh, 68 millimeters. So you just come down to the defined distance and um, enter in 68 millimeters. Now reality capture works in meters, so you just have to uh, enter it in accordingly. And then you can go back to the alignment tab and just uh, select update and it'll rescale the mesh to um, the proper distance. Now, assuming you have a clean mesh, you could bypass uh, 3D software entirely and just go straight to the slicer. So to do that first, we need to um, uh, simplify the mesh. Right now, this mesh is 5 million polys, which is far too much for the slicer and not needed. So we'll simplify it down to 100,000 polys. To do that, pick the Simplify tool in the uh, 3D Scene Tools menu, and then go down to the Target Poly Count and just set that to uh, what do you want here. I'm saying it to 100,000 polys and then click simplify. And then to export, we go over to the uh, export section and uh, select mesh and point cloud. Uh, the format that it exports in is an OBJ and you can see under the export options, there's a few uh, you can choose from for Blender, 3D Max, Maya, um, but right, we'll leave it on default and we'll see what it, how it shows up in the slicer. I'll be using Bamboo Slicer to uh, test it out. 
and you can see it almost came in correct. It just rotated 90 degrees to the left. So if we go back to Reality Capture, we can uh, adjust the export settings and we could just change the Z rotation to negative 90 and that'll compensate for the uh, rotation we saw. I just want to talk about this pop-up that you get where it says that the the uh, mesh is too small and it may be in meters or inches which is correct because the o obj file format doesn't have a concept of um, scale it'll have the number but it has no units for it so this will register as 0 0.068 but it doesn't know it's millimeters so selecting yes on that box will default it to millimeters and have it come in at the correct size and here we can go to the measurement tool and we can verify that the mesh is the correct size also you can see now that the uh, duck is facing the correct way um, the negative 90 fixed the export issue um, now it's not perfectly aligned i could have fixed this in rally capture i didn't so we'll just fix it here so we'll just line up the duck so it's facing straight out the printer and then we'll uh, sink it down into the bed so it has a nice flat uh, print surface and now we'll send it to the printer and see what the output looks like So that's a few of the common questions that come up when using photogrammetry to scan objects. So uh, let me know down in the comments if you have any questions on anything I showed today or any other comments regarding photogrammetry. If I get enough of them, I'll uh, do another video like this. Uh, start your comment with the word duck so I know you got this far. So that's all for now and thanks for watching and uh, go out there and scan all the things.